I built the ultimate cybersecurity resume that is fully optimized for both automated resume scanners or ATS, as well as human resume reviewers. Now this resume has been battle tested by hundreds of my most successful students over the years and is based on the exact same resume that I personally used over the course of my 10 year cybersecurity career to land jobs at multiple Fortune 500 companies and the US government. Now previously, I reserved this template for my premium clients only, but today I'd like to give it away to you absolutely for free. So check the link down in the description below if that sounds like something that would benefit you. And before we jump into the actual template itself, I want to introduce you to Nav, one of my successful students that was able to land a job in cybersecurity in about seven to nine months. So in conjunction of all the training that I was providing him, I also gave him access to this resume template that ultimately was able to help land him several interviews. I'm going to be honest, we had to work with him to train him up on the interview side. So he was the problem he was having after after he started using this uh, resume template is he was getting a lot of interviews, but he was bombing the interviews. So we had to kind of tweak things for him from there and really build up his skill set on the interviewing side, which can be a bit of a challenge in and of itself. But hey, when you're able to have a resume that's getting you a lot of interviews, well, it's going to be a lot more streamlined and easier to improve at your interviewing skills because you're getting more practice because you're actually having resumes, you're actually hearing back rather than just maybe getting lucky and hearing back and getting an interview interview maybe once a month or, or whatever it is for the people out there that are kind of going on their own. I've heard some horror stories out there. So let's make sure that is not you by uh, presenting this resume template here that you guys can start applying right away. So here is the template and I'm going to walk you through it line by line. So up at the top, we just have some basic information in the header section, your email, your physical address and your phone number. It's good to have this for contact purposes, obviously, and then first last name. Pretty standard, pretty straightforward. Now, the first key section here that I have is the objective section. And one of the mistakes that I see a lot of people make with this is they will have a massive paragraphs of text and this and that. I would say you want to err on the side of short and sweet. Just make it straightforward on what your objective is with your job searching process. So if you're targeting a specific uh, area of cybersecurity, you definitely want to highlight it there. And, you know, I'll teach you as well how to tailor this to the job you're applying for, because that is a very important component to really optimize things for you in the job search process. Here is where you would denote that. And I would say that it's a good idea to put a emphasis on how you're going to benefit the company, uh, not just all about you, 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 but what you can provide. So that's why I have this little blurb here, but feel free to tweak this section. By all means, you want to make it tailored to what you are focusing in. Because even though I'm a pen tester, you could totally apply this resume template to get a job on the defensive side as well. And in fact, that is what my student that I was showing you earlier, Nav did in order to land a job on the defensive side as a cybersecurity analyst. Now, the next section that I have here is education. So if you have any college education, you can put that that here. I have a graduate degree program and undergraduate. Now here's a little trick for you, a little hack, right? You always want to be framing stuff in the best way on the resume. Remember your resume is essentially marketing. So you can't be afraid to speak highly of yourself. And this is your opportunity to sell yourself to the company. So full transparency for you guys. And you might've seen this if you've been watching my videos for a time, I dropped out of my graduate program. I had a 4.0 major. So I highlight that here, right? I'm highlighting the strengths. I don't actually have my graduate degree. And if they were to you know, ask me to elaborate, on this and to see if I had it, I would tell them straight up that I don't, but I'm still going to feature it on here because it's good for optics. However, you know, I, if you didn't know, I dropped out because it was just so irrelevant to what I was trying to do in my field. I wasn't learning anything relevant to the job, similar to the undergrad. You know, my breaking point was when I was in a class that was supposed to be about cybersecurity, but we were studying the behavior of ants. Yes, you heard that correctly. We were studying the behavior of ants and I just thought it was so, <laughs> so dumb and so boring that, uh, you know, and all my classes were kind of like this and just a slog. I decided to drop out uh, my second or was it third semester, even even though I had a 4.0 GPA and um, yeah, it ended up being the, the right move for me because I didn't really want to get into the director level stuff. Anyways, I wanted to stay on the analyst side, which you can still make a super high salary on the uh, technical side. And that was the right path for me. But all of this is to say, even if you only went for the degree for a time, you can still put that on your resume. Even if you don't have the degree, if you 
you attended during a certain time frame, you can list that there. And if they pry and they ask, do you have the degree? Then you can tell them that you don't have it. I also put a comment here because I know a lot of you watching might not have any college education. And if you don't, then I would recommend to remove this section and bump up the certifications and activities section, which I'll show in a minute. Uh, up to the top here and really may have that as your main selling point. After this is where I would go into the work experience. I kind of left in some details on my previous work experience uh, since it is public information, you can see it on LinkedIn, but also it'll give you an idea of how to structure things. What I will say is if you are you know not in cybersecurity yet, so if you're watching this video, you're probably not yet in cyber, you might have stuff that is like super unrelated to tech and cybersecurity. I would recommend to highlight the areas that might even be tangentially related to cyber whenever possible. So if you were in an IT position and maybe you did something related to resetting passwords or something like that, anything tangentially related to cybersecurity, you really wanna highlight those aspects of the job and kind of, once again, reframing um, what you're doing as close as possible to what you're trying to do. So as close as possible to cybersecurity. Now I know a number of you as well might be watching this video with no even tangential relation to cybersecurity. In that case, what I would recommend is to maybe highlight some of the soft skills that are going to be helpful, like working across teams and maybe managing people or whatever it is. Uh, but for the most part, I would try to keep those to less bullet points, keep that slimmer, keep that smaller, and really put in a lot of the more heavy lifting in your activities and certification section and your technical skills and all of that. That will be your main selling point, which is why you might want to bump that up. Yeah, I wouldn't have super long blurbs about a ton of jobs that have nothing to do with tech or cyber for that reason. So you want to make sure you're using the real estate, the limited real estate to the maximum advantage here. Now, common question that a lot of people might have is, well, how long should this resume be? I would say that you want to keep the length no longer than two pages. Now, my entire career, full transparency for you guys, I've always done it on a one page resume. I don't think necessarily you have to keep it down to one page, but let me just tell you now, actually, if I were to apply to another job with the, all the cyber jobs I've had at this point, I would probably have to stretch it into two, but you can, you'd be surprised if you really take advantage of uh, really maximizing your your space that you're using and using everything to the fullest, you could probably fit most of what you're doing in one page, even if you've had like four different jobs, you know, IT and cybersecurity. So I would say that, um, you know, as long as it's not above two pages, then you should be fine, even from an ATS standpoint and everything like that. So here with this template, it's, it's about two pages. But of course, if you tweak this, you could definitely get it down to one. I don't think there's a huge advantage to having a two versus one page, but I have heard verbal confirmation from human reviewers saying how they appreciate that my resume was only one page because they're so used to looking at people that have like six page resumes. And when you're looking at resumes all day, obviously that will be a huge pain point for them. So if you can do that, that's something that will stand out. They straight up told me um, that that stood out to them. So something to keep in mind, but as long as you keep it around two, you should be fine. Now, the other thing that I wanted to highlight here, everything you see in red is what you would change out for yourself, obviously. And I mean, clearly if you change the job title to what you're doing, you want to adjust the bullet point were applicable as well. So keep that in mind. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward on the work experience. And then if you go down to the technical skills, here is where you are able to implement some ATS hacking. So hacking the, uh, the automated scanners and stuff. The way that you do that is when you look at a job posting and you scroll down and look through the description section of the job, it's gonna list a bunch of skills that they are looking for. This is pretty much them giving you the cheat codes to say, hey, this is what we want. This is the skills that we're looking for in your resume, in your portfolio. And so if you have those skills, if you feel, and even if you don't, if you feel that you can speak on them, I would highly recommend to add them to your technical skill section. So this overall template is meant to build out your base resume, but for every job you apply to, if you really want to optimize being not just a good fit for the job, but the best fit for the job, because that's the person they're going to hire, you absolutely need to take advantage of the technical skills section to be ATS hacking, to be putting in those specific skills that you have that they say that they're looking for. You want to take full advantage of the real estate in this section. And for the certifications and activities, that's where you would put any certs that you have or any cybersecurity. And here's the part, don't gloss over this cybersecurity related activities here, not related to your hobbies or, you know, you like to walk your dog at the 
park or anything like companies don't care about that. Let's, uh, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. They want to know what activities you might have done that are related to the job. So just to give you a few ideas, I was part of some local cybersecurity communities when I was living in Austin. So uh, there was one called Austin Hackers Anonymous, Austin OWASP and stuff like that. So I listed those activities in this section. And also, so you guys know, when I landed my first cybersecurity job, I didn't have any certifications. In fact, I didn't have a single cert until I was a senior in the field. So, so I just actually had this section labeled as activities. I didn't even call it certifications and activities. It was just activities. And uh, because I didn't have certs to, to showcase here. And I re really made sure that I built the section out. I stacked it with cybersecurity related activities that I was doing and really just breaking that out. And that had served me perfectly well. And it was how I was able to make plenty of progress in my career without having any certifications at all whatsoever until the late game, essentially. But definitely if you're coming, I know everyone comes from different backgrounds. So if you don't have like the college degree, if you, and if you don't have certain advantages that I had going in, then you probably do want certs. You probably do want um, things to vouch for you here in, in this section. This is the template here. You probably do want to have certifications on your side. Another thing that I definitely have to mention is you want to look to quantify your metrics wherever possible. So if you are in your work experience section or if you're in your activities section or whatever it is, if you have achieved something that has a quantifiable metric, meaning there is a number associated with it, like you were you know, in the top five out of a thousand in, you know, contestants, or if you were, you know, you improved a process, you know, by 20% or something like that, you want to make sure that you are listing that in your resume. So you're really quantifying all the success that you've had, because you have to think from the perspective of the business and, you know, businesses love to speak in terms of quantifiable numbers. So if you're speaking their language, that is going to help you a lot and give you an advantage when it comes to landing the job. And so if you'd like to expedite the process of optimizing your resume and landing your first job in cybersecurity, then go down below to book a call.